I want to talk about digital and analog audio. Up to this point in the tutorials, I've been talking about audio waveforms and haven't really differentiated between analog and digital. Well, analog audio is what we hear. We hear these continuous waveforms, and that's analog. When you record analog audio, it's like you speak into a microphone and the microphone diaphragm vibrates, and those vibrations are converted into voltage changes, and those voltage changes then can be converted into a waveform, a waveform that can be put onto a vinyl record or, let's say, a tape. And the problem with waveforms is that they're really hard to replicate over time. The more you replicate them, the more they degrade, because it's really difficult to make an exact copy of a complex waveform. Well, digital audio is different. Digital audio is not waveforms. Digital audio is just a bunch of discrete numbers. And you're going, wait a minute, I've been seeing waveforms here inside Audition. How can you say they're not waveforms? Well, that's because I haven't really zoomed in tight on the waveforms yet to show you that they're not waveforms. They're just a bunch of numbers. Let me show you what I mean. If you want to follow along with this demonstration, just open up 0204 Digital Audio by going File, Open, going to the Working Files, Multitrack Session, Subfolder, and double-clicking on 0204 Digital Audio. Let's go take a look at our favorite file, Tone 440, and we'll zoom in on this one so you can see the waveform. They were just beginning to see it. There we go. And you've seen this before, and you're going, but this is a waveform. What do you mean, discrete numbers? We'll zoom in a little bit tighter. And a little bit more. And what's that? It's not a continuous waveform. It's a bunch of little squares connected by a line. Well, the line is just a convenience uh, created by Audition and the Audition engineers just to help represent the waveform. In fact, what we're seeing are a bunch of discrete numbers. Numbers that, are when they're above this red line, the crossing line, are positive numbers. And when they're below the red line, are negative numbers. And that's it. They're just numbers. The numbers represent sound pressure at a point in time. That is all. They don't have anything in there that says, oh, this is a tone. And if I go look at a voice, for example, I'll zoom out on this. Here's our vocalist, Laura Lee Christensen. Just too hard to find. If I zoom in on her waveform and get closer and closer, you'll start seeing that even though these are complex waveforms, they too are just a bunch of dots. And none of those little dots, or samples as they're called, have any information that say, this is a female vocalist. They are just numbers that represent sound pressure, be it positive or negative, at a point in time. Let me explain that a little bit further. Digital audio waves are made up of things called samples. And those samples are positive or negative numbers at a point in time. And those numbers correspond to sound pressure. Samples have two characteristics. They have what's called bit depth per sample and a sample rate. The bit depth sets what's called the signal-to-noise ratio. That basically says how noisy is the quietest passage going to be. And the sample rate says how high of a pitch can you have inside this audio file. Let's move on a bit here. So I'll talk about bit depth. A sample bit depth determines the numeric range for the sample. So if you go back to your uh, computer science days, if you ever were at those computer science days, an 8-bit number can be no larger than 256, it's 0 to 256. But in the world of audio, it's 256 numbers ranging from negative 128 to positive 28. So an 8-bit depth sample can have what's called a signal-to-noise ratio of only 48 decibels. That means that the quietest passages will have noise in them, obvious kind of like staticky, fuzzy noise going on in the background, which is pretty low quality. It's called telephony quality. 16-bit can have numbers that range from up to positive 32,000. That's because 16-bit, when you translate that, that comes out to a little bit more than 65,000, but you know, negative and positive, that's how that works. And the signal-to-noise ratio for that is 96 decibels. That's pretty good. That means that the quietest passages will be pretty quiet. And this is CD audio, and some people talk about how CD audio is not perfect audio, and it's not perfect audio but it's kind of a compromise when they came up with the CD audio. They wanted to make sure that the file sizes weren't too big so they could fit you know, a little bit more than an hour's worth of audio on a CD. So they had to come up with some kind of a compromise and came up with 16-bit as being good enough, pretty close to the limit of human hearing when it comes to signal-to-noise ratio. 24-bit, which is a DVD audio, is above the signal-to-noise ratio threshold for humans. We can hear up to about 120. We can hear noise at the bottom of that level at about 120. Anything above that is just perfect. So audio DVDs sound great, and 32-bit sounds great as well. So 
if you record something, it's best to record it 32-bit, but if you record a 24-bit, your audio will sound great as well. So this determines kind of the quality of the audio in terms of the noise levels at the quietest passages. The other element of the samples is the rate. How many samples are there per second? And this gets a little confusing because the sample rate, which is stated in hertz, determines the highest pitch that can be heard in any particular audio file. And pitch is also represented in hertz. So boy, oh boy, it gets confusing. But a sample rate on a CD is 44,100 hertz. And the pitch that that will allow to happen cleanly is 22,000, which is right at the top of human hearing. So again, when they set the file sizes for a CD audio, they thought, okay, well, 44,100 hertz is fine because we can't hear above 22,000 hertz anyway. So that's the limit of human hearing. So that's how they settled on the whole CD quality thing, 16 bits and 44,000 hertz. If you increase, say, 48,000 hertz, then you can have a frequency of pitch that goes up to 24,000, which is above human hearing, and the 96,000 hertz for Blu-ray allows you to have a pitch that goes up to 48,000 hertz, which is way above human hearing, which is kind of toward the top end of a dog's hearing. And then if you sample down to something like 22,000 or 11,000, the audio quality definitely will drop. You won't be able to hear any high pitches there. The, you won't hear the harmonics that we've talked about before. 32,000 is frequently an audio level that's recorded on some camcorders. And so it's better than FM, but it's not as good as 48,000, which is a better recording level when you're using typical camcorders. So that's how a digital audio works in terms of how many samples per second and then how large can those samples be and the range of the sample size is set by the bit depth. So now that we're back in Audition, let me kind of take a closer look at that by going back to our 440 tone. Here we see these little numbers. And now this particular file is a 48,000 hertz file. That means there are 48,000 samples per second. So if I zoom out just a little bit here, there are 440 waves per second. And so if there are 440 cycles per second and there are 48,000 samples per second, then divide 440 into 48,000, you get a little bit more than 100. So that means there are about 100 samples in one wave. If I zoom in a bit, you might be able to start seeing that, but there are about 100 of those little dots per wave, and those 100 dots pretty clearly define the wave. They represent the wave really well. Our ears won't be able to tell that to just a bunch of discrete samples. But what happens if you go to a high frequency, like 20,000? This is a high frequency pitch. You can't even hear it, I'm sure. Just forget it. But it's really there, honest. This is 20,000 hertz. This is the really toward the very top of human hearing. So that means there are 20,000 of these waves per second. And there are 48,000 samples per second. That means there are about two samples or so per wave. So how could it be that two samples can really characterize a wave? What Audition software and other audio software does is to look at those samples and interpolate it. They look at what samples came before and what samples came after and then can figure out what the waveform should look like. But there is some debate about whether the top end, the high frequencies of, let's say, CD audio can be any good because there's only two samples per cycle and you can't really have true representation of high frequency audio at only two samples per cycle. But the interpolation works so well that it's one of those debates that can go on forever, but no one's ever going to hear it really, because it's just so high, the human hearing can't really differentiate it. But that's what happens at the top end, the high frequency, is that you only get a couple of samples per cycle. And so that's one reason why you want to record at 48,000 or more rather than something less than that. Now as to the bit depth, what does the bit depth mean? Well, you can't really see the bit depth here. You don't really know what that number is. But the higher the bit depth, the better the quality of sound will be and the less noise there'll be. Well, the bit depth for this guy is 32 bits. That means that there will be no noise in this thing, even at very low volume. So it's always a good idea to aim high when you record things. So that's a basic overview of digital audio. It's just a series of numbers that represent sound pressure at points in time.